Welcome, friends and family, to the 48th Annual Mount Desert Island High School Graduation Ceremony. We're here this afternoon to celebrate these young adults before me who have both given and received so much from this wonderful community. It's been my pleasure and privilege to know them and work with them during their time in high school. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a few moments to say thank you to those who have helped the graduates along the way. First, I'd like to speak about our community. It would be difficult to overstate how unique the level of support and engagement we have from our community. It is a gift to partner with experts from renowned organizations including the College of the Atlantic, Acadia National Park, the Jackson Lab, and the MDI Bio Lab. It is also amazing to witness the continued financial support that our community provides us. Local businesses generously provide our students with hundreds of thousands of dollars in local scholarships and and over 100 community members serve as mentors for senior exhibition, exhibition projects each year. I speak now to the families of our students, particularly of those who are graduating today. You have raised amazing young men and women, and that did not happen by accident. Thank you for all the love, patience, and time you have given to them. Thank you also for trusting us to guide them through their high school years. MDI High School is blessed with a tremendous faculty and staff who give endlessly of their passion, energy, and wisdom. 
No school, what other, whatever other traits it may have, can be successful without top quality educators coming to work every day. We are all indebted to these dedicated professionals. I'd like to give a special thanks to those who worked so hard to make this graduation ceremony possible. The high school administrative team and guidance counselors worked tirelessly in guiding the seniors to achieving their graduation requirements. Bo Green has done a wonderful job as senior class advisor. The custodial crew has the building, grounds, and gym looking its best. Jeff Zayman and the video team are live streaming this event as we speak. Mary Wallace, Jenny Rogers, and Wendy Littlefield have provided amazing organizational support. And finally, I'm forever in debt to Mary Coral, my assistant, who makes everything that I do possible. Speaking of our outstanding faculty and staff, this year we were fortunate to be joined by seven new educators. These individuals have each put their own mark on MDI High School and have made it a better place for students. The new faculty at the high school are Pam Bush, Carl Firm, Kelly Flynn, Heather Ford, Brittany Kearns, Erica Witham, and Devin Young. Sadly, 2016 will also see us bid, bid farewell to seven valued members of our faculty and staff. We wish them well in their future endeavors. Let's say thank you to Carl Firm, Adam Rabasco, Kylie Bragdon, Marty Lyons, George Deans, Roberta Raymond, and Jennifer Reefer. And finally, the reason that we're here today the students. Without engaged, curious, motivated, and talented students, what would a school be? The students that attend MDI High School are unquestionably its greatest asset. The class of 2016 is a unique collection of students who have the distinction of truly appreciating how lucky we are to live in such a beautiful place. They're a timely group to come through this school as their graduation coincides with the centennial celebration of Acadia National Park. It is encouraging and invigorating that so many of them value the outdoors and embrace the responsibility they have to be stewards of this special place. The class of 2016 are an extremely talented group in the classroom, on the athletic field, and as visual and performing artists. They will be sorely missed. Let's give them another round of applause. time now to move forward to the speeches in our ceremony. I'd like to introduce Peter Jacobson. He is the son of Jake Jacobson and Liz Laverick of Southwest Harbor and will be introducing our commencement speaker. He's a senior class officer, hearing committee member, and the MDI HS outing club leader. Peter participated in varsity soccer, show choir, main classical all-state chorus, and operation breaking stereotypes. He undertook a fascinating trip to India with the Experiment in International Leadership Institute. Peter is an accomplished outdoorsman and has been an Acadia National Park Wildlife Management intern and attended the High Mountain Institute in the fall of his junior year. This coming fall, Peter will attend Bowdoin College to study environmental studies. Greetings and good afternoon, friends, family, faculty, and fellow 2016 graduates. My name is Peter Jacobson, and I am one of five senior class officers here today. I'm so pleased to be with you this afternoon, the afternoon that marks a new chapter in the lives of our seniors, and also the 48th Mount Desert Island High School graduation. It is with great enthusiasm that I take this opportunity to introduce our esteemed guest speaker for the ceremony, Mr. Howard Coulter. Mr. Coulter has a long history of serving the school system, and I cannot think of a better, to, uh, a better person to deliver this commencement address. Among other sterling qualities, Mr. Coulter's experiences are of great variety and depth. As a first-generation college graduate, Mr. Coulter received his Bachelor of Arts degree in philosophy from Sonoma State College, his Master of Arts degree in education from Tufts University, and his school administration credentials from the University of San Francisco. 
Mr. Coulter's professional history comprises serving his country in Vietnam and 44 years in various teaching and administration positions in California, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and our very own state of Maine. Mr. Coulter has served as superintendent of the MDI regional school system for a total of 16 years, from 1992 to 2004, and from 2012 to present. On a final note, Mr. Coulter is a fascinating and accomplished individual, and we are grateful for his presence among us today. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Mr. Howard Coulter to the podium. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, well, first of all, um, Principal Haney and uh, School Board Chair Ingrid Cashmer and uh, deans and, and faculty, um, honored guests, um, more important than anybody, obviously the, the class of 2016, it's, a, um, it's an honor to, um, to, to be here tonight. I, I, this afternoon, I, um, it's been a long time since I've had the opportunity to speak to a class and I, um, I, I feel flattered to be asked to speak to this class. Um, well, first of all, let me just say that in, 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 in my family, <clears throat> many people in my current family never ever um, reached your level of accomplishment here. And I have people in my immediate family, so does my wife. We both are from families where, in our, in our immediate family, we have people that um, ended their education um, in sixth grade. We have some that ended their education in eighth grade. We have nobody that ever went beyond high school. And we, we take this very seriously. I mean, it, this is absolutely a, a major achievement that you, you've accomplished. It's a milestone. I, I, I love that word milestone. This really is a milestone in your lives. You should be very proud of yourselves. It's, um, it's, it's a big deal that you're sitting here today. I, I looked up the other day out of curiosity for this talk and just how many young people in America aren't sitting here today nationally. And it's about 1.2 million young people your age are not graduating this year. They say that that represents about 7,000 students a day walking out of high school throughout the entire year. 7,000. Um, maybe, yeah. Actually, I think it was 70. It's a very serious thing, um, the dropout rate in America, and you are, are bucking that, and your future is much brighter for it and I applaud you and your families, as Mr. Haney said, and your teachers, your loving teachers, talented as they are, to help you get this point. You know, today we we um, we kind of we're gonna you're gonna get off the big yellow bus, right? It's done, and you're gonna get on a much larger bus. And what I, what I want you to think about is changing your, um, your seating on that bus. I mean, in a, um, figuratively speaking, some of you have been in the front of the bus, sitting in those front seats, some a bunch of you in the middle, and some of you have been in the back of that bus. And what I want to say to all of you is that going forward, there is no seating arrangement. I mean, there's no sign seat. You sit where you want to sit. You, you, you're going to have a chance to make, maybe move. I hope you do that. I, if you don't, maybe you do have a chance to move. Get a new angle on things. Get a new perspective. You meet some people that are outside of your comfort zone and friendships. Push yourself. Challenge yourself. And think that, that you have a lot to learn from people that you don't even know in your own class that well. My point is that um, it's wide open for all of you. There, the, 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 it's just a matter of realizing your, your, your capabilities. You're all, each of you is terribly, terribly capable. 
And I hope that you tap that. I hope you challenge yourselves. I, I, I hope that some of the things that you think about strongly today, that you're going to do over time because you've moved around in, this, in the seating arrangement, have caused you to think differently, learn new things, and realize someday down the road that some of the things that you thought you knew really well today, you had half right or you didn't have right at all. So that, that says to me that you're growing, that you're learning, that you're exploring in ways you haven't yet. And I en encourage that. I encourage you to feel comfortable with, with changing some of the things you hold dearly today over time because you learn more, you see more, you thought more, you experience more. Um, I, I, the other evening was ha, ha, um, Friday night actually having supper with dear friends Rock and Helen Cavano with um, another friend Ed um, Caliber and we're sitting down the four of us and someone asked me the question um, well, so Howard, wh wh what are you going to talk about at graduation? And I said, you know, I think the theme I want to really work on is this whole idea of being nice, of the importance of being nice to other people, to be, to be generous. And I'm just really struggling with what I want to say and how I want to say it. And then at that point when I said that, Ed Calber, I don't know if many of you know uh, Mr. Calber. He, he used to be, he lives here on, on, uh, on the island. He used to be uh, the associate dean of the School of Education at Harvard College. And he actually was one of the founders and the first president for College of the Atlantic. He's a prince of a man. He's, a, he's just a lovely, lovely, thoughtful person. And so anyway, I'm just talking about what I'm kind of what I want to focus on. And Ed just starts quoting something about this very point, and I thought, holy cow, where did that come from? So he explained to me, I hope I got this story right. He explained to me that what he had just quoted was written by his classmate in college, and I think it might have even been his roommate. And this gentleman, was, I believe Ed said, the first black man to ever play football for Harvard. Um, this was, I think, I'm gonna guess, um, well, well, I don't need to get into his age, but a long time ago. <laughs> um, obviously, after we started playing football. So, um, this is this man was looking back at his life and wrote, I, I believe if I got it right, wrote this note to Ed, and Ed had memorized what this man said. And so I'm gonna do my best to try and share with you what, what Ed said at supper. Um, he said that, um, that the greater virtues are wisdom, discipline, and intellect. And the, the lesser virtues are such qualities as gentleness, kindness, cheerfulness, and gratefulness. And that he has come to believe that the lesser virtues are in fact the, the commanders of the greater virtues. So I can't say it that well on my own. That's what I'm trying to say to you. That you're all leaving here and I don't know what you're gonna do. I mean, some of you are gonna go straight to work, some of you are gonna go to college, some of you are gonna take a a gap year, some of you are going to go to community college or trade school, I don't know what. But you're all hoping to, to learn more, to do more, to become wiser people. 
bit more skilled at what it interests you than you than you have today. And what I want to say is what this man I believe is saying, which is that if if if, if you really want to be to do your best work, then you don't just focus in on the subject matter. You focus in on things as important and as personal as being kind to, to people, to being generous, to being forgiving, to being inviting and friendly. Have a smile on your face. Be grateful for what you have. Listen to other people. If, if these things are in place, you actually will be more skilled at whatever it is that you want to do in your life. It does not matter what you want to do. You'll be better at it. You'll be more successful. And more important than that, maybe, is that you'll find some reward out of that that cannot be duplicated, but, but from living those lesser virtues. I, I'll just say this. Um, what, what, what led me to want to talk about this subject was just how discouraged I am reading what's going on in our country and in the world about the level of, of, of suspicion and mistrust and fear and racism and bigotry and, and hatefulness. And I'm going, what the heck? We, we are better people than this. We, 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 this isn't right. And, you know, I, I see people doing things that are just, I think, like, not impressive, like firing a police chief. Are you kidding me? That doesn't solve racist problems that generated all of the, some of this anger. That may feel good for about a day, but the deeper issues could only get solved by us being more intimate and listening and caring and being kind and forgiving and, and listening to each other. So that's my challenge to you. I, 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 I can tell you this. I, um, I had, like a lot of people, anything but a childhood that you would say was like a bowl of cherries. It was not a, it was not the childhood that we would, that would be what we would want. I'll just say that. I would say that, that I then unfortunately made some really bad decisions in my life and just made, was already kind of a mess, a bigger mess. And then when, when, when I, when I, when that was, uh, by the way, I learned all that, right? So after that, I started being really isolated, and um, it, it was it was a, it was really lonely. And what? So people who know a bit more about my story have said, "Well, what happened? I mean, how did you turn this thing around, Howard?" And I, I, it was a lot of things. All I know is I can put a red pen on that line of the day that it started for me. That, 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 that turn for me, which was, was slow, to say the very least, but I know the day it started. And it was a man in my community, Patrick Monpair. And he took me in, 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 in his shop. And, I, and, and he had a, a little clothing shop. And, he, and I said, this man had heard about me. And he said, come in, I, I want I'll hire you. So and, and I, I said, I, I don't really particularly like clothes. I don't, I don't like clothes at all. And, and he said, I don't really care about that. I, 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 we, we can work with that. Well, what drew me more than anything was that I was really seriously uh, into boxing. I, I wanted to be a really good boxer. And he was a, a really, really good boxer. Pat Montpierre was the was a free his weight class the champion of the United States Army. His brother Jerry was the champion for his weight class the United States Marines. Their father, Monty Montpierre, was an American world champion boxer. This is a serious boxer. I'm going, this is a guy I want to be around. So he wanted to help me. I wanted to learn how to box. We got together. We became very close friends. Um, he's still alive. He's still one of my very closest friends. We were in communication often. And I tell him the story probably too often, he, and, but, but it's true. So what happened was, oh, by the way, he's so close to me that I named one of my kids after his dog. What? <laughs> we told people when our son Christian was born 
this darn little baby Christian. And people said, well, isn't that sweet? You named the baby after your religious beliefs. I said, no, it's actually really my, my friend's dog name was Christian and I like the, the guy. And so anyway, that's how close we are. So what happened was Pat Montpair, I hadn't worked with about a week. And he walked up to me one day and he said, okay, Howard, here are the keys to my store. It's got an alarm system, it's got a key, you set the alarm, you lock the key, you go out. When somebody was willing to have some degree of trust in me and faith in me, that was the day that the pin went in. And I think that we need to do more of that for each other. We need to be able to trust each other, have faith in each other, and we will get better results than being fearful and being frightened and being, well, I don't know what I want to say. So. Okay, so I, I was in my office the other day and Julie Kubinski was kind of kind of coming in, just checking on me, how you doing? Talking about this talk I'm giving right now. She said, Howard, look, here's the deal. I know this from reading about it. They're at the beginning of your talk, they're gonna listen to you. The end, they're gonna listen to you. The middle, no one's paying any attention. <laughs> so I figured it out. There is no middle. I'm going to the end right now, then I'm done. So here's the end. I'm, um, I, I'm, uh, well, I'm not actually in a mountain, uh, I'm, I'm on a large cattle ranch about, I was actually your age. I'm on a, a, a large cattle ranch with my friend Bobby Sandlin and we're building fence. There's actually a skill in building fence, but once you get it down, you got it. It's kind of like you're gonna tie your shoes. I mean, it's, you brag about it for about a week, then it gets old. So we're building fence day in and day out, it's getting old. And Bobby said, God, Howard, we could be up in the mountains fishing for trout right now. What are we doing down here? So I said, oh my God, you're right. So we told the rancher we wouldn't mind a week off to see if we could get jobs up in the mountains in the Sierra Nevadas. And um, so Bobby had a beat up old red Jeep. Barely ran, radiator overheated, we were nervous. We get up in the high Sierras. And we get in this community where there's a lot of houses, and Bobby said, you know, Howard, I, I think that we could maybe knock on doors to find somebody would hire us up here to paint these places. We could, we could paint houses during the day and fish at night. Perfect. So, much to my surprise, somebody actually said they would let us paint their house, which is amazing. We had no skill at this, no knowledge of what we were doing. And so Bobby said, look, I know a few people up in this area. I'm going to drive around and try and find some ladders and then why don't you hitchhike down into the valley floor, grab some paint, some paint brushes, come back up tomorrow, and we'll start getting to work on painting this house. He said, perfect. So I, I, I go out to the road, and I put my thumb out, and um, this car pulls up, a black 1950 two-door coupe, Chevy. And this man sitting there, he says, hop in, son. So I said, thank you very much. So I get in the front seat. And I looked at the back, and there's no back seat in this car. It's gone. And I'm thinking, well, that's kind of weird. So I look back there more closely, and on the floor of, the, of, of this coop was a wool blanket. And on the wool blanket is this dog, a shepherd. Kind of looked like a border collie, black and white shepherd. And um, I, I, I'm going, OK, that's fine. So this man starts to drive down this wicked steep road called the Toll House Grades. And it's a road that was built to get logging trucks up and out of the Sierras and very dangerous, very switchback. This is, this is like, you gotta, you gotta be, know what you're doing in this thing. I'm looking over at this man driving this car and he's moving up with his hands, his legs off of the accelerator and then putting a leather leg and dropping it on the clutch and then shifting the gear and then moving the foot off the clutch and back over on the accelerator, I'm going, oh my God, this is a, this is a shift, st stick shift car. And I'm thinking, oh no, this is not good at all. And I'm thinking that, well, maybe what I had to do is just jump out of this car. This man's already going down the hill. Before I realized this, I'm thinking, well, okay, there's a chance that I'll live if I roll. There's no chance if we go off a cliff. And I look back at this dog again. This dog is sitting there. He's not even picking his head up. He's just laying there and wagging his tail. And I'm thinking, that's so weird. So I thought, okay, well, it's too late now. We're just screaming down this mountain. And the, the man turns to me and says, you want a cigarette? 
I thought, do I want a cigarette? Exactly, I want a cigarette. <laughs> so I didn't even smoke then, but, but I didn't want a cigarette. So I light up, he gives me a cigarette, I light the cigarette, I turn the, the, the vent on the wing window. By the way, I don't know why they got rid of those things, those are sweet. But, but I get the window going just right, I got my cigarette, and this man explains to me that he lost both of his legs in, in World War I. And um, I, I, I knew enough that, to not talk about it, respected that. And we made it down just fine. And um, so there you go. So my, my, my point is, I want to leave you with this last thought, that you always have known you can trust your mother's advice. You also can trust dogs. <laughs> so with that said, I wish you all a lovely long life. I, I hope that you take care of yourselves. I hope that if one of you needs help, that another one of you will go help that person. I hope that you will practice and hold close to your heart those, those lesser virtues. Godspeed. Thank you, Howard. Very well done. Now I'd like to introduce the first of our two student speakers. Molly Brown is the daughter of Christopher and Rosalie Brown of Bar Harbor. She is a talented, highly evolved, and sophisticated artist. She was co-president of the National Art Honor Society, has received awards from the GFWC Maine Federation of Women's Clubs. Molly has used her art skills to raise money for the MDI Skate Park Project, enhanced the walls of our school, and she painted the mural that was featured at this year's Acadia Night Sky Festival. As a member of our National Art Honor Society, Molly has designed t-shirts to honor both teachers and students. She's a creative leader, a kind citizen, and a deep thinker. Molly plans to attend the University of Maine and is going to major in speech pathology. Molly Brown. to say that I have had a great high school experience. It's had its moments, but everything does. And I'm definitely ready to move on. But I am taking some really great memories and experiences with me. Everyone at this high school was either directly or indirectly involved with that. So I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you. So thank you very much. <laughs> Second off, I would like to forewarn you that I have had very little, tried none, experience with public speeches. So when I found out that I was one of the speakers at graduation, I was honored, but more than a little bit panicked. I really didn't know the first thing about giving a commencement speech. So I rushed to good old Google for some answers. <laughs> um, I found out that the ideal commencement speech should last no longer than 10 to 12 minutes. It can go longer if you're funny, shorter if you're not. Well, I'm not all that funny, so I'm going for the shorter speech. Please consider it a thank you gift to all of you. <laughs> so when I asked around to find out what people wanted in a commencement speech, some said they wanted advice, others wanted inspiration, and some wanted it to be funny. Well, since I had established before that I'm not funny, I decided to go with inspirational advice. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I've racked my brain for what I could say to inspire so many different people who have all had very different high school experiences. During my high school years, there have been a few instances where I've read something or I've heard something that I found to be very helpful. So I want to share them with you because maybe there's a chance that you'll also find them helpful. So my freshman year, I read The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Um, it was a great book. Um, it impressed on it impressed upon me two things. So one, 
Um, a passage in the book stated that the secret of life is to fall down seven times and get up eight. Falling down is part of the learning process, so we would live a very dull and boring life if we never fell down. Of course, some of us are, some of us may be further along on this path of life, but it's not a race. <laughs> we all need to fall down at our own pace. The most important thing to remember is that you have to get back up. Now, this is a lot easier said than done, I know, but don't hesitate to use whatever resources that are around you to help you. It's okay to ask for help, just ask nicely, and just make sure you get back up. And two, the journey to reach one's goals is just as important as the goals themselves. I've even heard that it's the best part. Now, goals are very important to have. Goals are also very personal, for example. One of my goals is to be able to do more than two push-ups at the same time. I kind of doubt that anyone here shares that goal with me, but the journey towards your goal is also very personal. You need to get there your own way, otherwise it's no longer your journey towards your goal. And as you embark on your journey, remember to learn from and embrace every experience along the way. Stop to smell the roses, so to speak. Who knows, as I'm struggling with that third push-up, the blood flow in my brain may be just right and I'll be inspired to make my best piece of artwork yet. Who knows? <laughs> and for those of you that have already read The Alchemist, you will understand when I say that one of my other goals is to visit the pyramids one day. So, I will close with one final thought. It is a bit cliche and you've probably heard it more times than you care to but I honestly feel that the expression, what goes around comes around, is something that you should be taken very seriously. Everything you do has a ripple effect on the world around you. It stands to reason that if you want to live in a nice, positive environment, then you need to impact it so. So smile, help others, smile again, strive to be green, and smile some more. So thank you, and good luck everybody. Thank you, Molly. And for our final speaker, I'd like to introduce Cassidy Perry. <laughs> Cassidy lives in Trenton and is the daughter of Scott Parody and Heidi Airy. She's a senior class officer and participated in varsity volleyball, basketball, and softball throughout her four years at MDI. She was also a member of the speech team, hearing committee, unified basketball, and interact club. She held many positions of leadership and will be pursuing a nursing degree at the University of Maine this fall. Cassidy Perry. All right, I'd like to start by giving uh, Mr. Coulter and Molly another round of applause. That was awesome. I'd like to start by saying congratulations to my fellow classmates. We finally made it, you guys. I remember so vividly the first day of freshman year. We clogged up the halls, wore terrible clothes, and thought we were hot stuff because we already knew our locker combination, thanks to Freshman Advantage Day. We've come so far from that first day, and I'm sad to say that these past four years have flown by. Over the years, although we may have taken different classes, we all had similar experiences here at MDI. We all suffered through Global Lit. We all struggled to meet an insane deadline. We had incredible teachers and some we just didn't click with. We all listened to the off-key singing of Mull Day. And we all faced the retributions after Senior Skip Day. Fun day though, am I right? I feel as though the class of 2016 has shared an incredible four years together and created a lifetime worth of memories in such a short amount of time. I'm honored to have been asked by my classmates to speak today, and I'd like to say a thank you to them by reminiscing on our time here at Mount Desert Island High School. I'll start with my experience. 
I came from a small middle school with a graduating class of 13. I knew hardly anyone and was entering a whole new world. My first day at MDI was amazing. My day started off with a smile from Karen in the main office, followed by Mrs. Gertler lecturing us about the dangers of dating seniors. A pretty typical freshman day. Throughout the next few months, I began to really know the people around MDI and become comfortable in the atmosphere. Soon enough, I was throwing frisbees at Mr. Humphrey, hiding from Mr. Dow, struggling to write my foreign policy paper for Mrs. Mack and Miss Muzzy, and trying to become an IPS genius to impress Mrs. Riefler. I was chatting and receiving support from the wonderful Mrs. Rao, talking basketball with Bragdon, and getting nasty grams from Devon for turning in my library books late. I also was be busy being easily confused by Jamie the custodian doing his bird calls and then hysterically laughing. <laughs> so much has changed these past four years, but who we are and who has helped shape us has not. Thank you to the teachers and staff here at MDI who have dealt with our class and pushed us to be the best we can be. Along with becoming great pals with the teachers at MDI, I also became acquainted with my class. Oh man, what do I say about my class? These guys right here in front of me are some of the most intelligent, incredible, fun, and fantastic people. I have learned so much from my classmates. But before I get into speaking about my class, I'd like to share something my grandmother said to me this past year. She said, Cassidy, your sister, she is a genius. You, on the other hand, <laughs> but you are smart in so many ways she's not. You have so much to offer this world in so many different ways. It was then and there that I realized that I was great at something and I was special in a certain way. I just had to find my passion to contribute to this world. So, to my class, even if you weren't that great at school or sports or music, you have so much to offer this world. Think of it this way. Almost every one of you has already influenced my life and taught me priceless lessons. Sage Jones, she taught me bravery. Kyle Lampson showed me that a smile is worth a thousand words. Colby Candid showed me that you can go anywhere in this world with hard work. Mike Nam Benicio showed me how to be gracious, even when people butcher the pronunciation of your name. <laughs> Emma Andros taught me it was okay to yell John Cena in the hall to your friends, if that's how you want to express yourself. Dana Cluido showed me that being quiet can lead to the most well thought out opinions. Lindsay Wilson and Yanni Ruguski showed me that there is always time to give back and help your community out. Claire Chandler taught me no matter what you've done in the past, you can always reinvent yourself. And also how to sass Lawson to his tipping point. Every single one of you has something beautiful and special and unique about you that can change the world. Whether it be you're an amazing mentor to children, an incredible cook, a wonderful singer, or you always win at NBA 2K16, you have a talent and you are valuable to someone. When I began writing this speech, I promised myself that this would only be a reflection of our time here at MDI and I wouldn't give advice because frankly, I'm only 17 and I give terrible advice. But somehow, for the second time in this speech, I'm dishing out some more wisdom. To the underclassmen or kids entering high school, I know you've heard it a million times but enjoy the time you have with the people you're with. These last few months, it really hit me that I wouldn't be seeing these faces each and every day anymore, and I stepped outside of my comfort zone and found the most beautiful friendships and the coolest people I never knew existed right here at MDI. <laughs> Please, keep an open mind and always try your hardest, whether it be at school, work, in relationships, or pumping some iron at the gym. You'll want to look back on your high school years and be able to say, that was the best time of my life. And you'll want to be able to look at your senior yearbook and be able to think of a special memory you shared with almost everyone. Please, respect one another, become friends with each other, and overall have a blast at MDI High School. To the class of 2016, it's been a wild ride, you guys. Thank you for everything. I can't wait to hear and watch all the incredible things you do with your lives. I know each and every one of you 
I love each and every one of you and I'm grateful for the time we spent together. Now I know people say the easiest part of our lives are over and college or the workforce get a million times harder, but don't discredit the dedicated work you've done to sit before me right now. It may get more unpleasant as we all move on, but as Molly said before me, if you fall down, you get back up and find ways to enjoy yourself and be successful. Go out and conquer the real world. I know with every part of my being, you can accomplish anything you set your mind to and more. Thank you. Thank you, Cassidy, Molly, and Howard. It was nice to see a theme running through the three speeches today. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Ingrid Kashmar, chair of the MDI High School School Board, will come to the podium and read the names of the graduates as we present them with their diplomas. Riley Patricia Bickford. Dana Clarito. Clara Turner. Taylor Dale Dorr. Ching Yao Chin. Lily Faye Besson McNally. Samantha Constance Farley. <laughs> Hannah Bouchard. <laughs> Haley Brooks Smith. <laughs> Mary Ellen Sharp. William Danderan. <laughs> Tanner Theodore Bickford.
Bryce DeMauro. Kevin J. Elk. Zachary Peter Charette. Brendan Timothy Sprague. Colby Ryan Candage. Elijah James Malloy. Dylan Collins. Nolan John Crandall. Sapphire Geiger. Mackenzie Dana Young. Dallas Lawford. Hannah Renee Edgecombe. Megan Hanlon. Allison Levitt. Allison Marie Gray. Cheyenne Shelton. Kelsey Sage Jones, Claire Chandler, Robert Wark. <laughs> Joseph Sanchez Flores. <laughs> Jessica 
Kristen Lee. Yanni L. Roguski. Nicholas Sober. Matthew T. Lambert. Andrew Birdzell. Samuel Murray. Christian Carpenter. Chris Boer. Emma Andros. Courtney Moon. Lindsay Jade Wilson. Kirsten Heather DeMaro. Molly Corson. <laughs> Juliana Ruth Cleves. <laughs> Nicole Renee Brown. <laughs> Sierra Tapley. Jennifer Alyn Clemens. <laughs> Chloe Vincetti. Richard Charles Zareen III. Pierce 
Todd and Damaro. Cole Adams Shaw. Evan B. Janot. Lucas Jones. Bro Isaac Ian Higgins. Portland Matthew Wallach. Pierce Incenti. Seth Young. Christopher Butler. Catherine Cornman. <laughs> Mia Broad. <laughs> Catherine Gurren. <laughs> Maitana Benicio. Natalie Rogers. <laughs> Lydia Francis Reifschneider. <laughs> Gabrielle Link. <laughs> Madeline. Thayer McCauley. <laughs> Cassidy Elizabeth Parody. <laughs> Riley Musetti Moores.
Jeffrey T. Lipsky Flores. Daniel Oaks McGregor. Jeffrey Robert Hanscom. Jacob Forrest. Quinn Isaacs. Jacob Everett Lemoyne. Ryan Michael Bender. Lucas David Wood. Will Miller. Tarzan Kane. Eliza Ellen Magar. Dakota Jean Abbott. Julia Lynn Nelson. Brittany Virginia Corson. <laughs> Eleanor Shields. <laughs> Aubrey E. Boyce. Jacqueline Michelle Wynn. Meg Stevens. Delia Rose Hallett. Grace Drennan.
Hunter Scott Riddle. Kyle Tucker Lamson. Caleb Jordan Payson. Jared Robert Lowell. A.C. Parsons. Cooper Bennett. Remington Justice for Zinnis McLaughlin. Peter Thomas Jacobson. Peter Warren Philbrook. Rylan Brand. Opal Curlis. Avalon May Curley. Molly R. Brown. Kelsey Elizabeth Shaw. <laughs> Keely McConomy.
Ryan Christopher Fitzpatrick Murray. Christoph Seichi Nashina Nagart. Isaiah Jordan Keen. Families, friends, and community members, it is my honor to present to you the Mount Desert Island High School Class of 2016.